for a five-man break that has been out there for quite a while after having to fight like fury to get the gap. Theo Bilbao has chased on and attacked from the peloton. A peloton that is splitting up behind because of a very, very wet road and a lot of nervous wheels around those descents. They're about to go climbing again, though, and the climbs up to Tortoreto both have 20% gaps and gradients. They're uneven. There's sections that are harder, sections that are easier, and it's kicking off from just about everywhere. Astana doing the bulk of the chasing here of Peyo Bilbao, who wants to take it on from the front, right? Yeah, bold move, and, uh, you know, a good move. Who's going to take it on? Because um, Astana, De Koenig and Trek, just kind of sitting fanned across the road. In fact, I think it's Phil saying it's just on the inside now. Just looking further back and just seeing the right-hand side, you can see that uh, Posse Vivo has been brought up the, uh, the left-hand side of the, uh, the road. Looks like he's still got a way to go to get through those cars, though. It's not ideal terrain, is it, here, as Sagan and Swift now go from the front. And problems for Movistar, because Vilela can't close. And Movistar, on strong terrain where they really should be taking the race to others, are being dropped, Brian. Yeah, it's OK having the numbers, but you have to have the, the legs to be able to, to deliver. But while this is happening, it uh, looks like uh, Peter Serre at the, the front of the, the peloton. Bilbao is gaining ever so slowly. This is Pozzo Vivo, being put in trouble, being given a lot of problems. He goes straight past De La Parte, the Basque climber for CCC. But Pozzo Vivo, oh, it's heartbreaking when you see that happen. All of the work they were doing, he must have been feeling so good. And he's now trying to survive as Cataldo is caught by Bilbao. And Bilbao is pulling out on the peloton now. Yeah, yes, he he's definitely going for it. And he'll be soon up to the, the riders in front. And... No big reaction from the, the riders behind, but the problem for uh, Posse Vivo is the, the riders are getting dropped and, you know, the cars will be um, dropping back as well. And Yeah, he's got a hard fight, probably the, the wrong time to, to go on the attack, but these two riders, Sagan and Swift, still battling it out in front, still in with a chance, but I think only a real slim chance now that uh, Bilbao is starting to come. You have to add it to them. They have been going all day long minute they're giving their breakaway companions a right kicking now Bilbao reaches this group Sagan and Swift power on Peter Sagan has some form now it's yet to translate into a win but if this carries on and the Giro d'Italia continues surely it has to come sooner than rather than later definitely looking good looking strong and um, Swift getting his kind of second win back now but there has to be a reaction from the, the peloton behind because of uh, Bilbao. They try, they're trying to keep a little bit of order, but, you know, a good effort from the, the man just at front here from uh, Barry and McLaren. I don't think he's going to get any help from the riders behind, but it'd be interesting to see who's actually doing any riding. And uh, is this Sunweb at the front now? Well, Peo Bilbao could take the Maglia Rosa today. 39 seconds. Remember, there's a 10-second bonus for the winner of the stage as well. That is why they'll be worried. And this is Peter Seri riding for the Koenig Quickstep. We just looked at a little bit further behind at the blue car. Um, Posse Vivo. Because Teo Gagan Hart, by the way. Teo Gagan Hart making a move. He wants time back on the GC. Sorry to interrupt, Brian, but that's a big move from Neos Grenadiers. And this could pull things back and set off some more fireworks. Yep. James Knox is starting to struggle a little bit. Almeida has tried to uh, come to the front. Siri says no. Then he goes pop. So uh, Siri going. James Knox struggling. So um, De Quick Quickstepper in, um, in trouble now. Real trouble. This is the first time, apart from the finish the other day, that we've had to see Joao Almeida fighting for his own Maya Rosa as Haram von Hooker is drifting away from the white jersey. Seventeen seconds for Peo Bilbao at the moment. Didn't look good earlier on, did he? But there's confirmation that Haram Verhooker is going to lose some time today. And the only problem he's got is he's got absolutely no team, teammates uh, round about uh, trying to help him as well. So still hanging on to this, but only with a small advantage. They'll be hoping that um, Bilbao gets across to them because Bilbao will ride. 
the danger for the uh, the riders in front now comes from the uh, the peloton, and I think Deconi quick step losing numbers all the time. Somebody has to take control of this race, and we talked about it before. As we see, Pozzovivo's made it back on. It. Who's going to take? Who's going to take up the the riding at the front of the peloton now? Well, that's nice to see. Whoever you're wanting to win here, whichever rider you are supporting, Domenico Pozzovivo having a puncture at just about the worst moment after his team had done the work to light this up. I think it's only good that he's at least back in the group here. Bilbao has taken almost half a minute on this group now. And that means he's very close to being the virtual leader of the race. Well, he wants to ride with these guys, of course, to gain time in the GC. And that would suit them as well. They want to stay out and take the stage win. But it's not easy for Sagan and Swift. They must be on their knees by now, Brian. They've given everything today. They have, and, you know, there's no point holding back. They have to, to give everything. And I think this will help if uh, Bilbao gets across. They'll know that he'll ride. And uh, Vilela, I think... It's lucky that, you know, Bilbao is coming across and uh, he managed to, to kind of hold the wheel, but you can only think that he's got almost empty legs. But who is riding at the front of the peloton? Deconic quick steps there. I think uh, Ineos with the uh, tail gig and heart, they, they know that there's an opportunity for a stage win here, but Sunweb are there. Trek with uh, Nibali, but just no numbers, no numbers to control things. and. And this is what they have to try and do. A big test for Deconi Quickstep now to try and hold on to this jersey. Well, the good news for them is that Masnada has just returned to the front. Seri trying to regain position, but you wonder what's left in the legs for the next and final ascent in Tortoreto, which is a classified climb. It's two and a half kilometres long, 7.1% average, Brian, but again, a maximum of 20%. The thing is, um, the likes of Fulsang and Nibali have to, have to look at this. Kelderman as well. That, um, they, they have to see that uh, Deconi Quickstep are, are really struggling to, to control this with Bilbao in front and possibly in this uh, final climb that tops out with uh, 11 kilometres to go we could see some action from them Hey, your Bilbao's been unleashed and could well be on his way to challenging for the Maglia Rosa Sagan wants to challenge for the stage win he still dreams of that, he still might get it and if he does pull this off or even if Ben Swift can do it as well. Let's give him the credit for being on the attack. It would be one of the most memorable victories in recent times. 35 seconds over the peloton. Left turn coming up here, and they head back up to Tortoreto, this time through a different side. Tricky terrain, wacky weather, and the Giro giving us a gigantic piece of entertainment after the rest day. Peyo Bilbao on the attack and trying to upset the GC. He has a around half a minute, or getting up to half a minute on the peloton. Remember, he has a gap of 39 seconds to the Maglia Rosa Joao Almeida. 10 seconds, bonus seconds on the finish line. There could be a change of leader at this Giro d'Italia today. The Koenig Quickstep are going to do their best to pull this back, and we have one climb remaining. It's all set up for a fantastic finale, Brian Smith. It is. And I, I'm looking at um, this front group all stretched out now with uh, Phil Sang there, Nibali, Kelderman all together. And I think with uh, Bilbao here, they have to react to it. They have to realise that Deconic Quickstep are, are really struggling to control things. And and even if one or two of them go and get across to Bilbao, it's going to be a, an interest in running it. I have to say it's not totally over for the, the likes of Sagan and um, Swift. If the GC riders come across. If they get anything left in the sprint at the end, Sagan or Swift could win this. It's been a brilliant, brilliant breakaway. They are the two survivors from a really strong group that we had up the road. Eight seconds behind them are Bilbao and Vilela. 
And the reason that some were coming up there as well, Brian, is because Bill Bow is currently moving up into second place overall above Wilco Kelderman. Is De Koenig quick step at the minute though, still working. And sitting there poised, ready to try and chip away and take more time is again is Theo Gegenhart. He sits just in front of the Malyarosa. He's a big mate, let's not forget, of the Malyarosa as well. Used to be teammates together in the under 23s. Be thinking about Gegenhart's GC challenge. He took time back the other day, but he's still 241 behind Almeida in 17th place. If he could chip away at something today, though, he gets closer to the fight for the overall GC. Comrade on his birthday in the top ten. Micah, his teammate, is in there too. Pan Steiner is the other rider from Bahrain in that group. And this is the undulating terrain before the start of the climb proper. He'll bow so strong that Villela can't hold the wheel here. Sagan and Swift continue at the front of the race. They're going to struggle yet again when it hits those steep slopes, you'd imagine. There's only so much in the legs, Brian, you imagine. But in this part of the course, on the a, on a descents, they are holding time. Very difficult to, to chase the, the time back. And with the help of uh, Bilbao, you know, Bilbao's just concentrating and gaining time. So... You know, it really, it's going to come down to this final climb, which uh, tops with uh, 11 kilometres to go. Bill Bilbao is one of the 12 riders who are trying to take on back-to-back -back Grand Tours with less than two weeks in between. Sagan, another of those, and he's just getting better and better and better. 37 seconds for him and Ben Swift as they start the final climb of the day. the road goes uphill it kicks uphill even more violently in the moment's time Bill Bowles making great progress here and he is seven seconds away from being the virtual Mallarosa looking for freedom since the race started not originally planned to come to the Giro d'Italia but he's been looking for those own chances after riding as a domestic for Mikel Lander. Remember the free Mikel Lander campaign? Well, this is Pale Bill Bilbao freed himself. And these are the men who are chasing him. It looks as though Aston are getting interested now. The Koenig Quickstep losing their power at the front. But the good news is other teams are starting to take this on as they're under the final climb now, Brian. Yeah, I think it's... Um, well, it's Bill saying... Um, the three main contenders, Filsang, Nibali and uh, Kelderman, just, I think it was a, an effort there from uh, Filsang. But, um, you know, they're just looking at each other now while uh, Bobao is still gaining time. But it's looking even better now for the likes of Sagan and, and uh, Swift. They just need to get over the top of this climb. They'll know that uh, Bilbao's coming and Bilbao will just, um, you know, ride all the way into the finish. So we could see a... A sprint between Sagan and Swift for the uh, for the stage. Well, Bilbao would be a happy passenger, wouldn't he? He'd be a very, very happy passenger. He'd be contributing the most in the chase, in the riding, you'd imagine, as you say, because he wants time in the GC. Sagan trying to press on as well. Now then, movement behind. Well, he follows with a teammate up the road here. Honoré is there too. Gagan Hart and Omen. And Ben Swift is being dropped by Peter Sagan. Oh, it's changing all the time. There are more twists and turns. Many more a chapter still be written with just 12 kilometers to go. Oh. An attack from the Magna Rosa. Hello. Everything's happened. It's all kicking off at the Giro d'Italia. And Joao Almeida has really thrown the cat among the pigeons there. Good reaction from Fulsang with Welko Kelderman there too. And Peo Bilbao rides past Ben Swift.
only Sagan to catch, but Sagan is close to the top here. This yeah. could be the performance of the century from Pedro Sagan. Yeah, this is uh, amazing to see, and even Joe Almeida going on the, uh, the attack there, and, and Ben needs to stay with um, Bilbao if he's got any chance of the, the stage win. It's killed him, and it's coming up now, but... You can only think that um, this is a, a huge day for uh, Sagan. Can he still pull it off, though? Almeida really trying to defend things from the front. And here comes Pozzo Vivo. After all of that earlier on, Pozzo Vivo, in the blue, was obviously feeling good today because even after all that panic, he's attacking from the front himself, too. This is an incredible race. Well, the gap's down to 26 seconds as Nibali comes across to close the gap too. He's bringing Geg and Hart with him and Fulsang as well. McNulty riding well at the back here. A little bit of looking around. Once more, there will be gaps in the top ten of the general classification. And on those steeper slopes, Domenico oh. Pozzovivo does what he was planning to do all day long. And you can see why he was. He is on fire, Brian Smith. Yep really riding well, really riding strong and Almeida having to react to it. He doesn't have any teammates so he's got one at the back just trying to hang on there. I think that's uh, Masnada but yeah, testing times for everybody still looking good for the stage one is uh, Pira Sagan and um, Posa Vivo closing this down but I don't think it's going to be enough by the top. And there is Peter Sagan. It's been a long, long wait, hasn't it, since the 10th of July 2019. But today could be the day. They've thrown absolutely everything at this man since the start. They've been left jabbing and right hooking, but every time he's been knocked down, he has got up and he's come out swinging here. Peter Sagan is one, one of the best days of his career. Yep, this is absolutely amazing to, to consider. When they initially went away, Grupama Rhodes even... You know, DeMar was riding on the front, it came down to about 16 seconds, but even at this stage, even if he gets caught, I still think that uh, Peter Sagan is going to be winning this stage today. So Pozzo Vivo now has Ben Swift on his wheel. Joao Almeida is the, king of the, is the uh, lead, race leader. And this is all that's left of the main group. Now Sagan has a 13 second lead over Bilbao. Remember that this descent is tricky, certainly in the wet, and then it's the flat road. Yeah, he just has to remain down it a little bit more gingerly. Remain upright, that's all he has to do. Sagan, we know he's a good bike handler, but that gives you confidence as well. If he stays upright, even in the, if this group catches him, still believe he can win the stage with the form he's in today. One hundred and sixty seven of the most entertaining kilometers of bike racing you're ever likely to see have been ridden. Ten remain, and we're gonna finish in Tortoreto Lido on what's been a dramatic day at the Giro d'Italia. Bombshells off the bike before we started, corona positive tests, but all of that thankfully has been forgotten about for a few entertaining hours. Peter Sagan was in the breakaway. He was attacking from the very first pedal strokes and had to fight just to stay there. They were 16 seconds away from being brought uh, back. Problem for and effort. now we've had problems behind for Jakob Fulsang as the GC contenders are almost there but are suffering. It's another puncture on another descent and another inopportune moment for Jakob Fulsang. And this is his Giro d'Italia in real trouble. Yeah, you can't ride that down the descent now, and the car's absolutely everywhere. I think you'll have to rely on neutral service now, but, uh, yeah, an unfortunate puncture for uh, one of the main contenders here. We've seen it happen to uh, Pozzo Vivo already today, as Bill Bauer, who attacked from the peloton, it's a teammate who's going to give him the wheel. It's a teammate who's going to give him the wheel, and Jakob Fulsang is going to be back on his bike, but my, is he going to have to work hard here, because he's lost contact with this group already. Yeah, just uh, swap bikes and... You know, we knew he was two teammates down uh, right from the start with uh, Lopez and Vlasov. Now he's had to swap on to one of his teammates' bikes and, and to try and come back now. He's being chased by Mikel Honoré here. There's Harum Verhoeke as well. 
Bilbao is being slowly caught by the Mayarosa group. Just nine seconds between them at the moment. Oh, and look at that. Look at that. It's over half a minute that Fulsang has to make up. And that is not good news. The GC challenge was going better than ever for Jakob Fulsang. Now then, this is the moment that he had the uh, obvious issue. And he's on a different bike. He swaps bike with a teammate. And you go back to that point, don't you, about the other two teammates he lost earlier on that probably would have been with him on a climb like that. Sagan is conserving his lead. 13 seconds over Bilbao, 26 over the Magliarosa group. It's his Giro d'Italia debut. He needs one stage win here to complete the set. Sagan looked absolutely tired out at points here, but he has dug deeper than ever before and is putting in one of the performances of his illustrious career to date. What a design of this stage. The way it's been raced has made it even more magical. I'm out of breath just watching this. Fulsang is chasing on. He's 40 seconds behind the Mayarosa group at the minute. They're approaching the flat section now. Most of the tricky twists and turns are out the way. There is Nibali. He's just behind Wilco Kelderman. I guess they're all going to work together to try and put time into full sang, you'd imagine. They can't wait up now with Bilbao up the road, Brian. No, I think they, they, were, they were all raid and... You know, I think um, Bilbao as well. The, you know, they can afford to ride now because Bilbao is in the front. It's, it's not a case of um, Fulsang um, having that puncture. This is Gagan Hart trying to take more time back. McNulty trying to chase him as well. Remember Gagan Hart, who is in 17th place at 2.41. It looks as though he's going to gain positions whatever happens today because there are some losers in the top 10. Amongst them, Haram Verhuka. And as it stands, Jakob Fulsang. How's the pink jersey reacting for you, Brian? Because this is his first really, really big test at the end of a stage. Well, I think he's looking OK. I think what they want to do is he's asking whether he waits for, um, you know, one of his teammates. I think Masnada is in the, in the group with him. So I think if Masnada and himself just kind of right to the finish, he, he will control things. But it looks as if he's going to maintain his uh, pink jersey. But... Uh, this man here, Pires again, tremendous day. You know, we keep on saying this with, uh, you know, some of the young guns coming through, but Pires again, has really stepped up today and it looks as if he'll be winning today's stage. He's been in breakaways, he's been in sprints, he's been in attacks. Throughout the Tour de France, it looked like it might be on its way. At the Giro d'Italia, it was a question of when, not if, surely. I know he's had his doubters. I know people have questioned whether he'd ever win another race. But here, Peter Sagan has put in a performance, I think, that he will remember for his entire career. He hasn't just put himself in with a chance of winning here, as Gagan Hart attacks. But I think, Brian, that Peter Sagan has put in one of the performances of his life. Yeah, he has. An absolutely super performance from the front. Not worrying the whole time, and... Um... Yeah, had enough left in, in the legs at the end and, and we keep on going on about a lot of these youngsters and big performances and you know, another good performance here from uh, Filippo Ghana but this is a huge performance here from uh, Pires again. Well he should be at the Classics normally at this time of year but he kept his agreement to go and race the Giro d'Italia and after this performance that will be viewed again and again and again. I certainly think he will be very happy with this decision. Now, Peo Bilbao is about to be caught by the Magliarosa group. Even just staying in this particular group would mean he'd be one of the day's winners. But he's made things difficult for those chasing him. 25 seconds for Sagan with four and a half kilometers to go.
Egan Hart is going to think about trying to chip away as much as he can. Well, I think it could be known to Tail Egan Hart thinking of more of uh, Ben Swift now. So they've got 27 seconds to, to pull back and put a Sagan. I'm not too sure that anybody's really interested in bringing Sagan back. Um, you know how much has Ben got left in the legs? He's, he's just at the back there, but you know it's an opportunity, a couple of kilometres to try and get a, a bit of recovery in, and uh, I think that's what Tail's trying to do now, and and also push on because you know everybody's moving up in the, in the general classification as well. Coming from everywhere. Mikel Fiel Kane. Is there any end to this guy's talents? Well, it was a brave chase to try and pull back five minutes. Didn't look like uh, Fiel there. I wonder where he was. Surely got to be McNulty. Let's take a look. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, McNulty there, um, going on the attack. Masnada at the front now, Micah just uh, sitting second wheel. So still only 20 seconds, but it looks as if um, Sagan has got enough just to kind of hold on. But it's a, a strong move from the, the group behind from uh, the American, McNulty. Raining cats and dogs at the finish in Tortore Toledo. UA Emirates. Well, the graphic keeps telling us it's Piel. on the attack at the start of the day it certainly doesn't look like him I imagine that this is Brandon McNulty trying to take back some time start of the day in 18th place at 2 minutes 45 now the more I look at it the more you realise surely it has to be Brandon McNulty at this point two and a half kilometres for Peter Sagan have a look back at the gap 20 seconds we're told as we heard from Bernie Eisel, remember, just one little obstacle up the road here, and it is a roundabout. Sagan just has to stay up right now. He's looking good, isn't he, Brian? He is looking good. Um, you know, these riders are just thinking about time at the moment, and, you know, McNulty getting stronger as this, this race is going on, but I do, do think that uh, Sagan has, has got this one in, in the bag. I know that he must be on his on his last legs, but so is everybody behind that are, that are chasing. Not often that we are lost for words in the commentary box, but today is one of those days where you look at what he's done and it's going to take quite some time to compute everything that happened in this stage, from the chase from Groupama FDG when it almost came back together, then a huge gap and you start to think that it might be fairly nailed on that the break does it then it comes down to as little as 20 seconds and you wonder if they're going to get a chance and then he somehow finds strength to pedal away on the final climb of the day and pull off a win like he's racing one of those big classics they've won Peter Sagan has been written off Peter Sagan has responded He's looking behind it, he's preparing himself for the finish already, he's coming up to the last kilometre, he knows he's going to win it and, you know, a few riders in the breakaway earlier on today would have had a chat, you know, with no chance for you in here, but he kept at it and um, had to deal with two from Ineos, two from Cofidis, two from Movistar and um, what a rider, what a performance and, you know, well done Piers again. 21 seconds as he enters the final kilometre. Peter Sagan can finally see the finish line. It's been a long time since he's seen it. The 10th of July, 2019. 15 long months of a drought, but today at Tortoreto Lido, it is raining like it hasn't rained in a long time for Sagan. A look behind. Everything you thought you ever knew about bike racing. Rip it up. Throw it away start again Sagan is back he's reinventing the rules we've waited for a long time for him to turn up to the Giro d'Italia 
but in the country where he started his cycling career, it's the renaissance of the showman. Peter Sagan is back. Peter Sagan has pulled off one of the performances of his great career. There you go, voila! Il Maestro, absolutely incredible as Joao Almeida is looking for bonus seconds behind. Remember, 10 go to Sagan. McNulty's going to take six, it seems, as well, and a few extra seconds. And Joao Almeida's looking for four. It looks as though he's going to get them two. Almeida increasing his lead in the Maya Rosa. And Sagan winning one of the most chaotic stages of the Giro d'Italia that we have had in a long time. It's the win of the century for Peter Sagan. Time after time, they threw punches at him. Time after time, he was up off the canvas. A Giro d'Italia stage win to add to the four from the Welter and the 12 from the Tour. And I tell you what, he might just be on his way to a points jersey challenge too. Arnold De Mar is in trouble for the first time at this Giro d'Italia. Peter Sagan is back. The three-time former world champion has done it. And behind, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Jakub Fulsang is losing time and quite a lot of time, Brian Smith. Yeah, it's quite unfortunate um, for Phil Sang. It's, um, what, a minute and a half now to the, um, the contenders, but this man here, absolutely exceptional. Not only does he win his first Giro stage, he completes his Grand Tour stages, but he wins it in that fashion and also takes the Cyclomino jersey as well uh, for uh, tomorrow. What an outstanding performance. What a show. And a reminder of who he is. And what a way to come back. It was almost worth all that weight. It was almost worth all of the doubt. And all of those who doubted, they have been taught a serious lesson today. Well, he didn't have to wait for a, a sprint this time. He did it pretty much all on his own. Heartling performance from the, the British champion, uh, Ben Swift, today. But, boy, what a stage that was. You can see McNulty just finishing in second place. A little bit disappointed when he crossed the line. But uh, Almeida takes the uh, four seconds time bonus just in front of Ben Swift. Brutal day. Hard, hard day. But... Um, you can just see how much it means to the team as well, Bora Hansgrohe. Huge performance, performance from Peter Sagan combat, today. Wasn't it? We've seen Peter Sagan put huge performances in to win the world title three times, you know, to win Paris Roubaix. But today that was that was top end uh, from uh, Peter Sagan. A heavyweight battle won by the biggest boxer of them all in the last few years. Peter Sagan finally lands the blow.